Welcome to our lecture online and another example in which hopefully you'll get a better understanding of what a derivative is. We're going to take a look at a, a function here. Here the idea is that it tells us how fast the dependent variable is changing when the independent variable changes. For example, here the function is x is a function of t, x is what we call the dependent variable. It depends on the independent variable t. The independent variable in this case is going to represent time. The dependent variable in this case is going to represent the position and there we have the equation that relates position x to time t. Now what you can see here is as t changes, as time changes, as seconds go by, we're going to be in a different position each time. For example, after this much time has elapsed, notice that we were in this position before and now we're in this position afterwards. So that means in this amount of change in the time, we had that amount of change in position. But if we go further on in time, for example, when we go from this time right here, where we'll be in this position here, and then a same amount of interval of time later, you can see that in the same amount of interval as we had over here, these are the same intervals in time, same changes in time, there's a much greater change in the position. So here we have a small change in position for the change in time, there we have a large change in position for the same amount of change in time. So again, the derivative is an indication of how much the dependent variable changes as a result of the independent variable changing. So here the derivative would be large, there's a large change, here the derivative would be small, there's a small change. And again when you think about it, it again is represented by the slope. If you draw a straight line right here, and make this into a little triangle, notice that this here represents the change in x, the change in position, this here represents the change in time, and therefore the slope, which is equal to the derivative, is simply the ratio of the change in position, the dependent variable, divided by the change in time, the independent variable. Now also, by definition, the change in position divided by change in time, we call that velocity, v4 velocity. So here you can see that in the case where we have x position as a function of time, the derivative of that actually represents the velocity. The slope of this line actually represents how fast the object is moving. And notice as time goes by, the object is moving faster and faster and faster. In the beginning of the time, the change in the speed is relatively slow. So the velocity here is slow, and the velocity then keeps on increasing, increasing, increasing. And so there we can say that a derivative in this case, simply represented by the slope of this graph, the graph representing the dependent variable x position to the independent variable t time, that the derivative is simply the rate of change of position as a function of change in time. And that's what we call the derivative. Now, let's carry this one step further. It turns out that derivative uh, x prime of t, and this is one way to write the derivative, this is also the same as saying that the derivative of x with respect to time, and in a later video we'll get into that a little bit more, what those things really mean. In this case it's going to be equal to 2t plus 6. And again, I have some other videos that actually show you why the derivative of that is equal to this. In short, what it means is we take the exponent, put it in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, so that becomes 2t to the two, 2 minus 1, which is 1. And here we have the 1 times 6 is 6, t to the 1 minus 1 is t to the 0, of course, t to the 0 is 0, and the derivative of constant is 0. And again, there's some videos that explain that in much more detail. So if this is derivative, let's now graph this function so now we have x prime, which we know now is v. So what that means is the velocity is simply equal to the derivative of x with respect to time, or x prime, or dx dt, and we have another function now. So let's graph this function and see what we get. So on the vertical axis, we're going to graph v, the velocity, or, which is equal to x prime, the derivative of x, with respect to time, and on the vertical axis we're going to graph time, and of course this is a straight this is a straight line equation. The intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, is right there. The slope is 2, so that's what this equation looks like. We're only going to represent it for time greater than 0. All right, so this is time greater than 0. And what does this represent now? All right, again, we have a relationship between velocity and time. And the derivative of that is represented by the slope. Now, the slope of this equation is 2. So this is the slope 
of the relationship between the dependent variable v, which is the derivative of x, and the independent variable t. And the slope then represents the change in velocity with respect to time. So here, the slope is equal to the derivative, which in this case is equal to the change in the velocity divided by the change in time. And of course, by definition, what is the change in velocity divided by change in time? That is the acceleration. All right, and so here we have another example where we have a function. In this case, the function is the velocity with respect to time. We take the derivative of that. The derivative of that will be the acceleration. And if we take the derivative of this, so v prime, that means the derivative of velocity as a function of time is equal to the acceleration. In this case, we take the derivative of that, that's equal to two. So here you see that the slope of the straight line two is the acceleration with respect to time, which represents a derivative of our original function. So hopefully again, that gives you some more insight as to what derivatives are. Derivatives simply explain how fast something is changing. For example, if we have some arbitrary function where we have the velocity as a function of time, and let's say this is equal to 2t plus 5, then if I take the derivative of that, that simply would then tell me how fast the velocity is changing as time is changing. In this case, of course, it would be increasing as time gets bigger, v gets bigger. So again, the derivative of that simply represents how fast the volume is changing as a function of time. So hopefully, that'll make it a little bit more clear.